What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn how to use machine learning to predict the winners of League of Legends games so let us get right into it. Alright, now for those of you who don't know what League of Legends is, it's an online game that primarily attracts the least mentally stable people out there, including myself. It's basically a 5v5 battle arena game, so you pick five champions on each side, you're trying to push towers, you're trying to take objectives, you're trying to basically destroy the base of the opponent team, but I guess everyone watching this video will already know about the game. Uh, what we're going to do in this video today is we're going to try to predict the winner, the winning team, given certain information that's present in the data. And for this, we're going to use a Kaggle data set called the League of Legends Ranked Games data set. So you will find a link to it in the description down below. We have some features like um, who took the first Baron, who took the first Dragon, what champs are picked with uh, what kind of summoner spells and stuff like this. And also stuff that is only available, obviously, after the game. So stuff like how many towers were taken and so on. Uh, which of course we're not going to use because what we want to do is we want to predict the winner very early on. So either already when we start the game um, using just the champions that were selected or maybe with some some basic stuff like who took the first tower or who took uh, who got first blood or something like this. Stuff that is clear very early in the game and we're going to see how accurately we can predict uh, the outcome of the game. So you just have to download the data set, you have to extract the files and then you're going to find this games CSV file, the games are 50,000 ranked EO West games. Um, they are in the CSV file here. And then you have some additional JSON files, which basically map IDs to certain champions. So um, ID 12, for example, is Alistar or ID 8 is Vladimir and so on. Um, this is important because in our CSV file, the champions that are picked by the individual players are just numbers. They're not uh, actually champion names. All right, so our goal is to predict the winner of the game using as little information as possible. Now, what we're going to use in this uh, video today is actually just one external Python package, which is, uh, or actually not one, sorry. We, of course, are gonna use two external Python packages. One is pandas and one is uh, scikit-learn for the actual machine learning. So we're going to open up the command line, pip or pip3 install pandas and scikit-learn these two packages. All right. Now, once we have that, we're going to import, first of all, a core Python package called JSON and then import pandas as PD. And then we can start with the data set exploration. So we can say DF equals PD read CSV. And we're going to load the game CSV file into our notebook. And then we're going to take a look at it. Now, what we see here, of course, not all the columns are going to be displayed, but we can see we have uh, some some basic uh, features here, like who took first blood. Basically, we have two teams, team one, team two. Um, and, you know, the winner is either team one, team two. First blood goes either to team one or team two, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then we have team two champions as well. Maybe it makes sense to start with T, uh, actually not T1, df.columns to see the different columns that we have. So basically we have a game ID. It's not gonna be really relevant to us. Uh, creation time is also not important. Game duration is also not going to be important because remember, we don't wanna analyze the game afterwards. We want to know who is going to win the game. So I, I don't know what the game duration will be, obviously. Um, also the season ID, I, I'm not even sure if we have multiple seasons in here, but uh, we can look at that season ID value counts. No, we only have season nine, so it doesn't really matter. This feature is useless. Uh, the important feature, of course, is, or the target variable, of course, is winner. And then we have these T1 champ1 ID, T1 champ2 ID, and so on. Uh, these are, of course, the champions picked by team one. And then we have champions picked by team two as well. We also have champion bans, which I don't think are too important because I don't really care about what champion is banned if I know exactly what the enemy team is going to be. So the bans are completely irrelevant. Uh, maybe, you know, certain people that are not good in the game will ban different champions. I don't know, maybe it has some information in it, but we're not gonna use this feature. Um, we're also not going to use the summoner spells, not because they're irrelevant, but if you think about it, how would you want to model that? Now, I'm by no means an expert in leaks, so I'm, I'm not really high ranked at all. I'm very low ranked, but um, 
as far as I understand it, the summoner spell in and of itself is maybe not that important for the game. What you would really want to know is which champion that you pick uses which summoner spell. So maybe that would be an interesting combination, but how do you want to model this? It gets kind of complicated because I don't care how many teleports I have in one team, even though it could, of course, influence the decision making. But what's important is, does the top laner have um, the summoner spell Ignite or TP, for example, depending on the champion, depending on the enemy champion. So it, it's more about the combination, which laner uses which summoner spell and not just how many Ignites do I have, even though this is probably also important, but we're not gonna really include that into the decision making. So I'm going to try two things. First of all, I'm going to try to make a prediction only with the team composition. So only team one, team two champions. I'm going to try to predict the winner. And then we're going to add some stuff that is clear pretty early on in the game. For example, first blood should happen usually within the first five minutes, I guess, or for first 10 minutes, I don't know, depending on, on the elo probably. Uh, first tower could take a little bit longer, but these are all things, first dragon, these are all things that can happen quite early in the game. And if you have this additional information, it's interesting to see how much better you can predict the outcome of the game. Um, all right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the features that we're interested in. How can we model them? Now, of course, if I look at TF, uh, DF, sorry, um, T1 underscore champ one ID, and then maybe T1 champ two ID, then this is what it looks like. Now, the problem is, and this is usually what kind of problem we have when we work with uh, categorical data, these IDs are IDs. So they're not values that are on a numerical scale. It's not like champion one and champion two are necessarily more similar than champion one and champion 150. So there is no proximity in the numbers. There's no scale. There's no direction here. It's more like you can have this champ or this champ or this champ. So two numbers that are very close together doesn't don't have to be similar. So it doesn't make sense to leave it like this. Um, what makes sense is to one hot encode the champion. So to basically take every single champion and turn this champion into uh, a binary variable, yes or no. So you have, for example, uh, champion Garen, yes or no. Is Garen part of team one? Yes or no. Uh, is Garen part of team two? Yes or no. So almost all the values are going to be zero and only the champions picked are going to be one. That's the basic idea. Um, so what we want to have is basically we want to have every champion twice as a column. So we want to have T1 Garen, T2 Garen, T1 uh, Timo, T2 Timo, hopefully always zero. But that's the basic idea. We want to model every champion as two columns. One is the champion if in team one and the other one is it in team two. Um, and to see what we're actually working with, we're going to, since we're going to turn this into one hot encoded features anyways, we're going to replace the IDs by the name so that we can see actually what we're working with. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the champ data. I'm going to say champ data is going to be equal to JSON dot load open, and I'm going to open the champion info JSON file. And um, this champ data basically has a uh, a key called data that includes another dictionary and then we have the individual IDs and then also the names, as you can see here. <clears throat> so what we're going to do now is we're going to apply um, this mapping to the individual columns. So what we're going to do, we're going to say DF and then T1 champ1 is going to be equal to DF and then T1 champ1 ID, we're going to apply to this a lambda expression, lambda x for a given ID, we're going to go to our champ data, we're going to go to data to the data dictionary here, we're going to go to the string version of the ID because here, as you can see, these are strings, and I think in the data set, they could be integers. So we're going to typecast them into strings. And then we're going to say, I want the name of this champion. And now I'm going to copy paste this, because I want to do that for all the champions. I want to do that here as well for all the champions. And then I want to do the same thing again for team two. There you go. 
So if I do this, I have a problem because why do I have a problem? Perhaps you forgot a comma, I don't think so. Apply lambda x. Actually, I shouldn't have forgotten a comma. I'm going after the champion ID, apply lambda champ data. Let me just copy paste the line of my prepared code and see if there's any difference here. Probably there will be. Oh, yeah, I'm not closing. I'm not closing the apply function here. Obviously, there you go. And now, if I look at the data frame, you can see that I have these additional columns here with the champion names instead of the IDs. So what we're going to do, of course, next is we're going to only select the champions. So we're going to say uh, DF is going to be equal to DF. And I'm going to only pick the columns that are relevant. Now, remember, we're going to first try to do it only with the champions picked. And then we're going to do it with the uh, with some additional information. So I'm going to actually go and say what I'm interested in is T1 champ one. And then uh, I want to copy this. And I want to do champ two, champ three, champ four, champ five, and then I want to copy this in here. So team two, team two, team two and team two. And then of course, don't forget to include winner because that is our target variable. So now our data frame looks like this, we have the team compositions, and then we have the winner who won the game. Um, now, since these are now not values, of course, that we can fit or that we can feed into a model, we need to one hot encode them. So we need to actually turn them into binary variables. Also, it doesn't really matter if I pick uh, a champion as champ one or as champ three, it doesn't really matter because these are not necessarily the lanes. These are just the pick order. So it only matters if it's part of team one, uh, or part of team two, or not part of any team. So we only need per champion two binary features, which is still quite a lot, because I think in this data set, we have 138 uh, champions. So we have to take this times two. these are then our features. Uh, but we're going to do that by uh, getting the one hot encoded feature, we're going to do that with pandas using the get dummies function. So for example, I can say get dummies of the data frame column t one champ one. And this will result in this, we will get Aatrox, Ari and so on, uh, all the champions as a column with zeros and ones, almost all of them are going to be zero and the ones picked are going to be one. And what we want to do, of course, is we want to use a prefix. So we want to say prefix is equal to team one. Uh, because of course, this is the first part. Um, and we want to do that now for all the columns. So we want to say encodings one hot encodings is equal to a list comprehension. Uh, instead of providing the column name here, I'm going to say column for column in and now we're going to provide all the T one uh, all the T one uh, column names like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to combine them into a data frame. And how are we going to do that? Think about it. All we have to do is we have to add them together because we don't want to do some fancy merging, we just want to add all the ones together because we're not going to have a one in the same champion, we cannot pick the same champion twice. So we just have to add all the zeros and ones together to get the full picture. So I can just say, combined df one, actually, let's call this encodings one is going to be equal to sum. just apply to some function onto the encodings one. And then we can do the same thing with two encodings two, combined df two encodings two, and then all we have to do is change the prefix and also change this to t two here. All right. And when I run this now, I have a problem. Why is that? Because of course, I need an additional closing bracket for the list comprehension. And uh, what's the other problem? I don't need this closing bracket. There you go. And now what I have to do to combine them actually is if I look at them, 
combine df1. As you can see, we have some ones here. Um, this is now for team one. Then we have one for team two, and we now just need to join this with the original data frame with this one. So we have to say df equals df join. And then we're going to join uh, this together with the combined data frame one and the result will be joined then with the combined data frame two. And this is then our result. We have a lot of columns, as you can see here. And now, of course, what we can do is we can drop all of these because we're not going to use them. So I'm going to say df equals df drop. And I'm going to drop now all the columns that we had up here. So these here, I'm going to drop all of them, axis equals one, and then we have only our winner and our one hot encoded features. So this is now our data set that we can work with. So having all this, we can now go and just train a simple random forest classifier for it because uh, a decision tree makes a lot of sense here. You just look at all the champions. Is he included? Yes or no. And then you just make a decision. So using decision trees makes sense and using an ensemble is usually better. So we can say from sklearn dot, first of all, model selection, we're going to import the train test split so that we can have a training set and a testing set. And then from scikit-learn dot ensemble, import the random forest classifier. You can also play around with different models, by the way. Uh, but this is just one that usually performs very well. All right, so we're going to say that our data is x and y, the x data is everything except for the winner column. So we're going to drop the winner column axis one. And the winner column is of course, the y value. Now, then we're going to say x train, x test, y train, y test is going to be equal to a train test split on x and y with a test size of 20% 0 0.2. And now we have our data split into training and test uh, testing data. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to go right into the training because we don't need to scale the data since the data is um, since the model that we're training is a random forest classifier, it's not scale sensitive. So we can just say our classifier is going to be equal to a random forest classifier with n jobs equal to negative one. So we're going to use all the CPU cores, and then we're going to say fit it to x and y. And then we're going to get our classifier shouldn't take too long. And now we're going to evaluate it. Now, maybe you're expecting a very high score. Consider what a high score would mean here. So consider how realistic it is. If you know League of Legends, how realistic is it that I can predict a winner, just given the team composition. Um, so we can score this on actually I fitted it on all of the data. So let me just fit it on the train data and score it on the test data. We have a 53.25% accuracy. Now, usually when we do machine learning, this is a very, very low, um, a very, very low score. Um, but the problem is that in this case, it's actually not that bad, because yes, it's just a little bit better than guessing. But 53% is actually already quite significant. If you go to a website like u.gg, uh, and you go to the tier list to see which champions have the highest win rate, you will see that if you have something like 55% given a champion, of course, this is way less information, this is just one champion. But if you have a win rate 55%, this is already huge, you can see it's colored uh, orange, because this is a huge uh, win rate already. And here, if you have something like 53%, this is already quite significant already, a normal win rate would be something around 51.3 or something like this. These are like not too significant win rates. So if we have something that can already predict with 53% accuracy on average, this is not too bad, we cannot expect much more because just the team composition alone usually won't decide the game. So 53% is actually not that bad. However, we can still include additional features, we can say, okay, let's say I wait a little bit, I see who gets the first blood, who gets the first tower, or who gets the first dragon, these are uh, things that happen quite early in the game, usually, um, then how well can I predict the winner. So all we have to do for this is actually we have to uh, go to the section where we drop or where we select the features here. 
and I can now just go ahead and add one feature first blood because this should be the first thing that happens first blood and then I can run the code again let me just make this smaller let's run all the code again now I'm also using first blood how much better are my predictions and you can see I already get 57% accuracy. So just knowing who got first blood, I get 57% accuracy in addition, of course, to the team composition. Uh, but this is already quite good. Now I can extend this and I can say the first dragon is usually also not too, too late in the game. So I can go ahead and run this again with the dragon information. So who got the first Drake? And in this case, I will get already 68% accuracy. This is quite good already. Just by knowing the team composition, knowing who got first blood and knowing who got the first dragon, I can already predict it with 68% accuracy. This is really good. Uh, and if I add something like the first tower, which should happen a little bit later, but also not too late into the game. If I know this, probably I can have a pretty good prediction and if I run this, I get 71%. Now I think if we include something like the first Baron, this should be even, this should be a pretty high accuracy, I guess, if we include Baron, because Baron you get quite late in the game. So knowing who got the first Baron is probably a pretty significant piece of information. Well, let's see. There you go. We get 80% uh, accuracy. And what we can do now is we can try to see the feature importances. So what are the feature importances when it comes to this decision making? What is we can say importances are equal to a dictionary that is the result of zipping together the CLF feature names and the CLF feature importances. Um, and then we're going to sort this. So sorted importances is going to be equal to sorted importances, uh, not mean items. And the key for sorting is a lambda expression, because we're going to sort based on the importances, not based on the on the name in reverse order. And then we can look at the sorted importances. And we can see that the most important feature seems to be the first Baron, not surprising, first tower, first dragon, first blood, I think this is just because the game goes on longer. And you know, if you get the first Baron, you're probably quite good later on in the game, which is much more important to who's winning than just the first blood, which can happen uh, also to the winner easily. Uh, and then you can see the most important champions. Now, keep in mind that this does not mean that these are good champions to have. It just means that these are significant champions to have. So maybe it means that everyone, someone gets Tristana, he loses the game. Now, every time is, of course, not true. It's not that important. But this could also be a negative influence. Now, how can we see that we can get the win rate from the data set for a given champion very easily, I can say champ name equals, let's go with Tristana. And I can say that I want to get all the wins of Tristana when she's picked in team one. So that's basically the length, how many entries do I have um, in the data set where the following is true that df and then t1 underscore champ uh, no, t1 like this champ name is equal to one. And also that the data frame winner is equal to team one. So how often is that the case, then wins two, the same thing for team two and winner two, and then the losses. Actually, I'm messing up some order again. That should be it, I guess. Um, then I can just copy this. The losses. Losses one are going to be when the champ is picked and the opposite team wins. And the win rate is then obviously just the wins one plus wins two divided by the total number of games where the champion was picked. So wins one plus wins two plus losses 
come on, losses one and losses two. That would be, of course, a 51% win rate for Tristana. Uh, if I look at Thresh, which was the second most important, he has a pretty low win rate. So probably it means that when you pick Thresh, you are usually, you know, this influences the decision to you losing, I guess. Uh, this is how I would interpret it, but the significance is not too high. So, yeah. But yeah, this is how you can use this data set or how you can use League of Legends data to predict who will win the game. If you have a data set with timestamps, maybe I can make a second video if I find a data set like this. Um, if you have more information for the same game, so maybe the farm or the gold uh, advantage given a certain timestamp, then maybe you can make even a life decision making system or a life prediction system. But in this case, just knowing very little information already leads to a pretty good accuracy. I think we have we had 68% just knowing the uh, first blood and the first dragon and the team composition. So this is already quite good. Uh, and yeah, this is how you do that. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.